All right. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Take it away, Joe. All right, thanks. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Can you see that? Yes. All right. What if the way to save the ocean is to live on it? What if every baby born added a small improvement to the ocean environment? What if the wealthier each baby got, the healthier the oceans became? All right, it works. What if accelerating the rate by which the poorest billion people became prosperous could fuel a mass restoration of the oceans? This image was created by my Dutch engineers who planned to put a billion people on the ocean by 2050 and were starting in 2020 because this is the way to achieve escape velocity into negligible senescence, which Aubrey de Grey just spoke about a few hours ago. I'm Joe Quirk. I'm president of the Seasteading Institute, a nonprofit think tank committed to building floating nations on the ocean, and I'm co-founder and managing director of Blue Frontiers, a startup company which will build the first seastead by the 2020s. And why should you futurists care about it? The singularity can't happen without seasteading. Information technologies may be on an exponential trends, but the number of regulations are increasing and dragging down the productivity of research and development. And where is this trend going to be in 2030? My friend uh, James Clement is a lawyer, a biotech entrepreneur, and a research scientist. He's the founder of Androcyte, which has sequenced the genomes of at least uh, several people who are 110 years old or older. He's the president of Better Humans. He has everything at stake to extend our lifespan, and he is frustrated. He wants to accelerate medical breakthroughs uh, on seasteads, and stem cell doctors have already moved on shore, and it's time to build more islands. So Blue Frontiers plans to provide innovators like James with regulatory startups as soon as possible on semi-autonomous floating islands in paradise. Nearly half the world's surface is unclaimed by any state. Long before we go to Mars, we're going to discover planet ocean, which is more than twice the size of all the land on Earth. And we start immediately. Just a few months ago, I ate breakfast in the center of the Blue Frontier. Here's my colleagues, 10 seasteaders pointing at the exact spot where we will build the world's first seastead and apply 10 years of research conducted by the Seasteading Institute. The Seasteading Institute was co-founded in 2008 by philanthropist Peter Thiel, who co-founded PayPal and was the first outside investor in Facebook, and Patry Friedman, uh, an engineer at Google, a venture capitalist, and grandson of the Nobel Prize-winning economist Milton Friedman. Patry is also the co-author with me of our book, Seasteading, How Floating Nations Will Restore the Environment, Enrich the Poor, Cure the Sick, and Liberate Humanity from Politicians. How are we going to do this? Startup countries. Patry observed that Steve Wozniak didn't change Hewlett Packard from within. After his design for the personal computer was rejected five times, he left and founded Apple with Steve Jobs, and now I get to use it. So where will the Wozniaks of governance go? Patry proposed that if we have a startup sector for governance and people can vote with their houses, where we will decentralize the very ground beneath our feet, we could replace monopolies on government with a market of governance. 
And over the last decade, thousands of people have been infected with this dream. Entrepreneurs create prosperity by solving problems. The bigger the problem, the more prosperity we can create. And what are the two of the biggest problems in the world? Sea level change and the lack of innovation in governance. Seasteads are a technology to solve both these problems at once. When I get off this floating city and get on that land city, my cost of living goes up. My chances of being mugged, panhandled, ticketed, taxed, and shot all go up by orders of magnitude. Why is the floating city better? That priestead is largely self-governing. Last year, 25 million people, a population equivalent to Taiwan, boarded cruise ships for private governance at sea. What if that self-governing floating city never docked, but floated in international waters permanently? The prototype for our floating island project already floats in the Netherlands. This is the floating pavilion in Rotterdam. It was built by our Dutch engineers. It's mobile, it's sustainable, it runs on solar, it recycles all its water, including its uh, toilets, and it's affordable in shallow waters. These platforms are designed to last more than a century in seawater. So the world leaders in environmentally sustainable floating real estate are on our team, Blue Frontiers, and the world leader in legal innovation has joined our seasteading team. Tom W. Bell is the author of the new book, Your Next Government, From Nation States to Stateless Nations, where he writes about special economic zones. Special economic zones are legal islands created within countries, allowing special exemptions from taxes and regulations to create prosperity. Special economic zones have overall been so successful that more than 4,000 have proliferated across the world. This is the most momentous political revolution uh, sweeping the earth from the bottom up. It's completely peaceful and nobody even knows about it. And it's allowed the developing poor to put their kids straight into the professional class. At least a half billion Chinese have escaped extreme poverty as they migrated to these special economic zones. And now they are crammed up against the coast, poised on the edge of the aquatic world because the ocean is the superhighway of trade. Is it time for a new legal entity? Tom W. Bell has designed the Sea Zone special legislation taking the best practices that have been discovered in those 4,000 special economic zones and applying them for maximum wealth creation on innovative, sustainable floating islands on the sea. So Blue Frontiers has the legal innovation, we have the engineering innovation, and now we have the location. Seasteading is about to start in the most beautiful place on Earth, in some of the calmest waters on the ocean, and this was the view from my bedroom a few months ago. This is the president of French Polynesia, Edward Fritsch, in the presidential palace where he met with seasteaders and he said, let's build the future together. Year one of the aquatic age began in 2017 when the Seasteading Institute signed our memorandum of understanding with French Polynesia agreeing to empower innovators to create floating startup societies. That same day, we announced Blue Frontiers. These are our five co-founders and our first three staff. On the left, you can see our legal engineer, Tom W. Bell, and on the right, you can see our aquatic engineer, Bart Rofen, who designed this. 
that's based on a local flower to honor the Polynesian culture. Our mission is to sell sustainable, modular, floating platforms with significant regulatory autonomy in the territorial waters of host nations. Our floating island project empowers coastal people to organically adapt to sea level change and the means to experiment with 21st century governance. And here's two ways Blue Frontiers makes money. One, sell or lease real estate that we create, new jurisdictions. And two, C Combinator, take a stake in companies who want to be part of this nano nation accelerator. We need to act fast. French Polynesia is concerned that they may lose a third of their islands by the end of this century. Here are our future customers. The orange dots are the places with rapid population growth, and the blue dots are places with rapid population growth and risk of floods or sea level rise. So Blue Frontiers has zero competitors and first mover advantage. French Polynesia is already poised on the edge of the ocean, ready to take flight. They're famous for overwater bungalows. And what if these floated? What if they were filled with marine scientists and permanent residents? Blue Frontiers is taking the first baby step to the sea. In the last four years, French Polynesia has created four economic development zones, and that's a perfect precedent for sea zones. We're committed to ecological integration. As you view our floating island from shore, it blends in with the reef, so it looks like any other island. Here's how it's projected to look as you're walking along the beach during the day. Not until you take a boat and you get up close, you realize it's green roofs with solar panels. This is the minimal viable product for the first tiny nation. We plan to connect about 15 small floating islands, each about the size of a baseball diamond, hosting about 250 people, zero personal tax, zero corporate tax, no import duties. Uh, we'll create our own labor code, our own medical code, and our own financial code. We develop in three phases, 15 islands a phase, each taking two to three years, each costing between 50 and $75 million. By 2030, I expect to see roughly 45 platforms for 170 million. The floating island is designed to integrate economic classes. Villas, apartments, and bungalows are designed for researchers, students, businesses, and families. I think of seasteads as the iPhones of the sea. We provide the platform, you bring your governance app. As long as people can choose among them voluntarily and leave them voluntarily and create them voluntarily, uh, we believe the best solutions for civil society will uh, emerge. We plan to build with local coconut fiber and local wood such as uh, bamboo or teak or kohu, which is a local tree known as the tree of iron. 20% of the surface will be solar panels, and since water costs, since water cools the solar panels, uh, floating solar is 20% more efficient than solar panels on land. There are so many things you can do better on the water. Blue Frontiers partnered with the Biomimicry Institute. Biomimicry is imitating nature's designs and uh, incorporating them scientifically. So we're looking at multiple strategies. Uh, for incorporating biomimicry into our designs. And by integrating all these blue technologies, we're going to exceed the environmental standards set by French Polynesia and MARPOL. And our Dutch engineers are committed to a complete paradigm shift, which they call cyclical metabolism. Our goal is to become 100% renewable and 100% uh, self-sufficient using solar and wave energy will be about 25 meters deep, and we plan to improve the lagoon. Uh, underwater drones will study the turbidity, and imagine if you could restore coral reefs simply by the presence of your floating platform. 
Our engineers at Blue Frontiers have devised a plan to position the platforms to create shadows, to lower temperatures just enough to spark the restoration of the corals. As the sun moves about, you get enough light on the ocean floor to spark so photosynthesis, but you lower heat just enough to have a restorative effect. Children who take class trips to these floating islands will see with their own eyes how floating islands can restore life. We share the planet with numerous other species, and the Blue Frontiers community plans to share our homes. Blue Frontiers plans an underwater restaurant designed for about 100 diners a night. Imagine the eco-tourists who will dine on Polynesian cuisine and witness through the windows how floating societies can restore the environment. We completed all our obligations to French Polynesia. Now we await legislation for our sea zone. MC, a premier economic modeling firm, estimates that by the end of phase three, businesses in the sea zone will create more than 2,000 jobs on the seasteads and on the uh, nearby islands and will infuse more than half a billion dollars into the French Polynesian economy. And that's not our estimate. That is an independent third party. Uh, we hired a French law firm, GB2A, to research our sea zone and they delivered a 150-page document saying that in the evolution of special economic zones, the sea zone is a legally legitimate next step. Blue Frontiers will sell company equity by a cryptographic equity token because we care about the inclusion of everyone, we care about transparency, we care about fluidity, and if we don't have a seastead in the next couple of years, funds will be returned to the token holders. It's going in escrow. And if you want to find out about this, sign up at Blue Frontiers. With sea zones, sea steads, and sea, sea coins, uh, Blue Frontiers is going to demonstrate how decentralized voluntary societies are going to work on the stateless half of the earth. At seasteading.org, several thousand customers have already filled out our online survey telling us what they want in their floating city. And how much space do we have to experiment with sea zones? French Polynesia controls an area of ocean the size of Western Europe. Imagine it, a whole new blue continent. Seasteading is our launching pad to the stars, oceans first, Mars next. If you want to learn more, check out my book with Patry Friedman called Seasteading. And uh, if you want to join our community of about 70 volunteers, uh, go to bluefrontiers.com uh, with a hyphen. Sign up to learn about our cryptographic token. We're, we're, we're a growing community all the time. This is the future. And I'll see you at sea. And I timed it perfectly. I'll be happy to answer your questions afterwards. Thank you for listening.